Today we're going to be talking about how to draw hair. I'm going to show you guys how to draw several different hairstyles for both men and women. We're going to talk about several different types of hair, whether you have straight hair or wavy hair or kinky hair or curly hair. We're going to talk about all of those and we're also going to talk about hairlines and how to draw hair using reference. This is kind of a basic introduction to how to draw hair. I have templates available to my amazing patrons over on Patreon. So if you'd like to print them out and draw along, you can join me at patreon.com slash soup. And this was recorded to help me prepare for Art Squad. We're talking about drawing hair this Thursday and I thought a tutorial would help out with that. So let's go ahead and get started. The templates I'm going to be using for today's presentation are this basic head shape, pretty simple to draw. So if you don't feel like printing it out, you can draw it yourself. We also have a fairly basic front profile and back with the hairline and basic facial features already drawn in in case you want to design some hairstyles. It'll give you an idea of how it looks in three different views. I've also got some really handy visuals from my Manga Madness presentation. I'll show you guys those in a little bit. So grab your pencils and let's get drawn. Before working on this tutorial, I did several hair studies to make sure that I was nice and refreshed and ready to talk about this topic with you guys today. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think a while back, a long time ago, we had a Power Hour art stream where I showed you guys how I go about drawing hair. Now, I cannot find that live stream for the life of me. So unfortunately, I won't be able to reference it for you guys today, but hopefully I'll be able to cover everything you need in this tutorial. Now for this tutorial, you don't need to know how to draw a constructed face, but I do have tutorials here on the channel that'll show you just that. And I do think knowing how to construct a human head is a really useful skill and I highly recommend you give it a shot if you haven't tried it before. So I'll link those tutorials as well as other useful links and references down in the description below. So to start, I want to talk about the hairline. The hairline is where your hair originates off of your head. And your hairline is basically going to be the same regardless of your gender or age, but it does change based on hair growth patterns, cowlicks, and even balding. So let's go ahead and start with the hairline for the front view. And I'm going to start by constructing the face but I'll do a really basic one. I'll sketch it really quick. And we'll know it's the front because I will do a smiley face. Why not? I'm also going to go ahead and sketch in where the ears are going to go. These are not my bestest, bestest ears, but that's okay because understanding where the ears go is going to help us understand where the hair goes. So the thing about your hairline on the front of your face is imagine your head is a round ball with like an oval coming down from the front of it okay so this line here this is the middle of the head that's where your eyes go halfway between the top of your head and the middle of your head here that is generally where the hairline starts so we're gonna mark that here and different people have different size foreheads. Uh, I have a five head because I have a really big forehead. Some people have a three head. It's not technically called that, but you guys can kind of get the idea. And the joke is that your hairline is four fingers above your eyebrows, even though it's spelled F-O-U-R, like four instead of F-O-R-E, as in forehead or front of the head. So basically, the front view of your hairline kind of does, goes in and out quite a bit. just 
flatten the top there and color it in, it'll start to look like pretty basic hair. But basically, the hair is curved at the widest part of the forehead, and then as it reaches the sides of the head, kind of forms a C shape, and this can be a gradual C shape. It can be basically just a line like that. Goes down straight like that, goes in, and then you have the little bit of hair that goes in front of your ears. Now, this is more pronounced on some people than on others. And it's pretty common in anime to draw that as big, floofy things like that. But some people choose to shave it, some people choose to gel it back, some people choose to have it fade up. But everybody has. I think those were called elf locks at one time. Everybody has some amount of hair right in front of their ears. So that's the front view. Okay, what about if we're drawing people in profile? Whip up a quick head for you guys. The more you practice drawing this, the faster you're gonna get at it. When you've drawn it one million times like I have, you're pretty dang fast. Pop in the eyes, pop in the nose, pop in the mouth, that way you know for sure they're facing the side. Put in some eyebrows and you guys can see halfway between the eye line and the top of the head, we have our hairline there. Your ears are typically the length from your eyebrows to your nose, so sketch those in as well. And then we'll go ahead and kind of flatten the back of the skull here. So we've got our curve right there. Then it kind of comes back out, comes out again. A little bit of hair in front of the ear. And you don't have to draw it like this if you don't want to. Sometimes different art styles, it really doesn't suit the art style. It looks a lot like Lupin the Third. Nothing wrong with that, but that might not be the look you're going for. So that is how to do a hairline for a profile view. Then finally, we're gonna do the back of the head. Now the back of the head doesn't come down as far as the front of the head. You can see just a little bit of the ears poking out. And this here is the neck, and then this would be the front of the face that you wouldn't necessarily see from the other side. So the back of the hairline comes down a little bit onto the neck, and then some people, it comes down a little further to a point. Some people choose to have that shaved off, some people don't have as much of that. Again, hair patterns vary a lot by person. And that is why we practice drawing from reference because we're gonna see how much variety there really is. So that is our front view, our side view, and our back view of the hairline. So how you draw hair can have a lot of different variations. We have different hair textures, we have different hair lengths, and something else that can cause a lot of change in how hair appears is cowlicks, or where the hair is coming off of the head, or widow's peaks, when the hairline kind of comes to a peak in the front or objects like bandanas that we're using to kind of tie our hair back. So everybody has different cowlicks and cowlicks are kind of the whirlpools where your hair sprouts out of your head. So for this guy here, I've drawn the cowlick up there. For this young lady in the mask, she's got ponytails. So the hair is originating from two hair bands that you can't see and then kind of coming out from there. For this elf kid here, the hair is starting here 
and then flowing down. For this kiddo here, they've got their hair tied back with a bandana, so it's flowing this way. And then for <laughs> this Sever Snape knockoff, the hair is flowing kind of limply from the top of the head. So where you put the cowlicks and how you change the flow of the hair can really change how the hair is drawn or how one haircut looks on different people. So another example would be on these faces here. We have lots of different hairstyles. We've got short hair, we've got longer hair, and these are all drawn pretty simply and cartoonally. Not a lot of detail is given, but you can see how different hairstyles change the look of the face. This is just the same base face, but even just by changing the hairstyle, you can change the character pretty drastically. So it's important to pay attention to hair and hairstyles when you're designing characters because it can really say a lot about the characters you're drawing. So when I'm drawing hair either from reference or from my imagination or I'm designing a new hairstyle for a character, I try to think about the hair in three different zones. Now if you have a really short, close cropped haircut, that's not going to play as big a role, but if you have longer hair, it's going to be something you want to consider. So here, this graphic kind of helps show very rudimental, rudimentarily, it helps show the three different zones. So we have the first zone, the bangs, anything that is in the front of the head or kind of falls onto the face. Then we have the second zone. So that's the zone where the hair kind of falls over the ears or it might block the ears. And then to me, you have the back zone. That's all the zone that's going to be kind of behind the character's face, behind the character's ears. You can add in additional zones if you want to for different hairstyles. You can have stuff coming out here. You can have stuff coming from the back and then looping around the front again. But breaking it down into three basic zones can kind of help you think about the hair in a more manageable way. And on that note, it's also very helpful to break the hair down into kind of basic shapes. So here we have those same faces. You can even kind of see them through. Um, we have some basic shapes. So I'm using circles. I'm using kind of teardrop shapes. I'm using kind of rectangular flat top shape. I'm using swoops and whirls. I'm using circles again. Circles are gonna be a pretty common theme in how I design hair because I tend to design characters that have fluffy hair. And you can see how starting with these basic shapes with a little bit more refinement and working from reference and adding in more details, you can start to have some pretty distinct hairstyles. So usually when I'm drawing hair, and I'll actually walk you through the process in a minute. When I'm drawing hair, I usually start by blocking out the basic shapes and then working in more details. Now, when you're drawing hair, it's also important to think about what hair texture the characters or the people you're drawing, what hair texture they have. Do they have really long, straight, fine hair that just basically falls flat? Do they have curly, bouncy hair that has a lot of volume? Do they have more wavy hair that kind of goes every which way? Do they have dreadlocks which kind of flow but they also still have a lot of life of their own? So while they flow in one direction, it's a more gradual turn than if their hair weren't in dreadlocks. Do they have just kind of a combination between, you know, straight hair and more wavy hair? So we want to think about curls, we want to think about how large or how small the curls are, we want to think about whether or not someone might have used gel in their hair to get it to kind of lay down flat in certain areas, we want to think about volume, we want to think about how the hair is being pulled, like in this instance it's being pulled up and then wrapped around in a spiral for a bun. In this one it's being pulled up but then it's in very cute little pom-poms. Or in this example, it's being pulled away from the face, up and away from the face. But then it's kind of allowed to um, hang freely behind the little butterfly clips. So 
when you think about hair texture, it's going to kind of affect, or it's definitely going to affect how you draw the hair itself and what hairstyles are available, which is why I highly recommend working from reference and practice, practice, practice. The more you practice drawing hair from reference, the better you're going to get at drawing hair. And I have two ways I recommend going about it. I recommend you draw from photo reference and ideally take notes as you draw. You may also, if there's an area that kind of gets lost in your initial sketch, you may want to redraw it a few times so that you can better understand it. Or if there's something interesting going on with the hair, like in this hairstyle, she has small braids, she has large braids, and then she also has really cute curls of hair kind of coming down from this and this is really cool too because it's a braid that's been wrapped around to create this long ponytail so working from reference you can find all kinds of really cool inspiration for different hairstyles so let me show you guys how i work from reference when i'm drawing hair okay so i'm drawing the girl who has really curly hair it's a back view and it looks like she's got braids as well as curly pigtails. So that's part of this is thinking about, you know, what you're looking at and analyzing it before you even really dive in. And when I'm drawing the head, or and that includes hair, I try to draw the head underneath it. This is gonna help me better understand the form of the hair and how the hair is flowing on the head and what the hair is doing. Okay, so I've got a basic head and I, you can see her neck as well. So I'm gonna sketch in her neck a little bit. Now, it's a little bit more side view than the original, but we can work with that. Okay, so First of all, I'm thinking about hair flow and she's got a part in her hair right down the center and her hair is pulled real tight and then it kind of goes into those pigtails. So these knots here indicate where the hair is wrapped around to form kind of a little short bun, I guess. And then I'm sketching the base shape, the volume of her pigtails. And I can break this down into individual like ringlets if I want to later on. Okay, so her hair is pulled tight against her head and it's pulled tight into two braids. And the way I'm kind of sketching the form of the braids is I'm just kind of blocking them in for right now. And how you choose to do that is kind of up to you. It's really whatever you're comfortable with. And we can also see a little bit of hair coming from the front. All right, so now that I have kind of the basics sketched in, I can start figuring out more of the details. So one of the details is that the hair is being pulled tight into both of these braids. And it's being pulled tight all the way down to the nape of her neck. So we can use this kind of design and if it's going to one point you can use this kind of design to just kind of indicate where her hair is going. And then for the braids, a little bit difficult for me to see. The ones on this side of the head are kind of obscured. So I'm using a technique I use when I'm drawing like the edge handles on baskets where it's just these kind of shapes repeated over and over and over again. And then for this one, we can actually see more of the braid shape. So I actually have to draw the interlocking braid strands, I guess, braid loops, braid bits. Not sure what the technical term for that is, but maybe one of you guys will let me know down in the comments below. And right now, 
I'm just practicing learning how to draw hair. I'm not a big believer in, you know, super easy, let me show you how to do it in four easy set, steps kind of tutorials. I'm a bigger fan of this is how you learn how to do the thing because you can take what I'm showing you guys here for how to draw hair and learn how to draw clothes and learn how to draw animals. So I prefer these kind of tutorials because I think they pay off in the long term. We're learning how to think about things. All right, so she has a lot of really pretty curls and they look like a lot of them are kind of doing this and then maybe they might double back on themselves and do like this, but that's kind of our basic shape. But I don't want to draw all those curls necessarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about this a little more volumetrically. I'm going to go in, I'm going to shade some areas and I'm just kind of using the flat of my pencil for this. And what's nice about this is it also kind of echoes the curls we're going to be getting in our hair later. And to, depending, do I want to do this cartoony? Do I want to do this more realistically? That's going to kind of change how I draw her curls. So in this instance, I'm going a little more cartoony. If I wanted to give like a really realistic depiction, I would take my time and try to really capture the detail. And there's different ways you can kind of represent the curls that we're seeing. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just doing a handful of those different techniques seeing what works, what doesn't work. If I hit on something I really, really like and I think really works well, I may redraw her hair using just that style of curl. But the whole point of sketchbooks is to kind of play around with them and to try different things, experiment, see what you like, see what you don't like. The one thing I will recommend you not do, and this is general, this is not a hard and fast rule, this is just kind of my recommendation based on this kind of art style here is don't fill the entire thing with curls like that. That doesn't really represent the curls that she has. Now, if you're doing a really abstracted, stylized thing, yeah, maybe, um, you know, different art styles have different needs. But in general, if you're doing a cartoony, semi-realistic style like this, you want to avoid these kind of curls. They just don't really look like the curls we're looking at in the picture here right now, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna make a little note here to the side of what her bun looks like and the hair is all wrapped around, going like a spiral almost. Then I'm going to do the same thing for this ponytail over here. Now the nice thing about kind of depicting her curls in different styles is that I'm kind of capturing, you know, the curls moving every which way. Cause they have a lot of volume and they have a lot of spring and they have a lot of direction in them. It's a really cute hairstyle.
And hairstyles like this usually look cuter the more detail you put into rendering that hair. Alright, we've got another reference image pulled up. So I am going to start again by just sketching in the basics of her head because to me to understand how to draw hair it really helps to have a head form to put on it and that's why I made all those different face templates for people to use um, in case you know you just want to focus on drawing hair you don't have to draw the base head yourself okay she's got a really high hairline Actually, I had to had to look really closely at it because there's a lot going on there. Okay, so first off, most of her hair is being pulled up into a ponytail at the top of her head, but the ponytail is made up of wrapped head hair. So I'm using a conical shape to represent like where the hair is actually going. And we're gonna sketch in a hairline for her, although her hairline is a little bit unusual. Or maybe the wind is just blowing hair in front of her face like that. It's hard to tell, but you can see with her, she does actually have some of those elf locks in front of her ears. Hers are a little more wispy. I drew these a little a little more stylized, a little bit more cartoony. And then her hair is kind of falling like a waterfall. So kind of an I dream a genie hairstyle. And it's also hitting against her back. So I'm not gonna sketch her back in too much, but we're gonna capture the basic gist of it. Yeah, it's hard for me to tell. Oh, okay. Actually, this is not hair being blown forward. It's hair. She just has a lot of scalp visible in some parts of her hair. But it's a very cute hairstyle and she's still really cute. But I'm just trying to understand what's going on. So I'm drawing her hair a little chunkier than I might. I'm going to do this one a little bit more cartoony and that way I can show you guys how to use photo reference for cartoonier styles. Those of you who are familiar with my work either on Instagram or on my webcomic, you know I have a cartoony art style. I don't do a lot of realistic stuff by choice. I happen to just really like cartooning. So her hair is being pulled back into this bun pretty tight too so that's why you can see some of her scalp and then her hair from the ponytail is going in two directions we have some a little bit going this way and most of it going this way so you guys can see the point of drawing the major forms first and then we can break it down into smaller details and her hair is wavy Tell you something about wavy hair like this. You actually have to style it to look like this. You can't just wake up and it look wavy like this. Because my hair, when it's short, is wavy, but when it's long, it's too heavy to be wavy. It's too fine and I have too much hair for it to be wavy. So it takes a lot of work to, to look that effortless. But that's one of the other great things about cartoons is you can draw whatever you like. You don't have to be focused about realism. So something cool about wavy hair is you can think of it as like a river. Just kind of flowing down the head. And once you get a good rhythm, it's so fun to draw. And I totally ganked a lot of how I draw wavy hair from a friend of mine who draws really, really pretty wavy hair. 
So that's another point. If there is an artist you admire, an artist whose art you like, and they draw something in a way that you think is just really well handled, you could ask him for tips or maybe try doing some fan art of their characters so you get a chance to explore how and why they draw certain things a certain way. For her hair, I do want to capture some of, she has, um, gee, it is brown hair, but it's like light brown hair. So I want to capture some of the color. And what I'm going to do is a technique you get from older comics where you do these. They're like anti-highlights. And basically you do them where the hair would be in shadow. So if there's an area right after a bend in the hair, you can do that and it kind of also helps make the hair look shinier and it also implies the direction of the hair. Then like I said, you can see a little bit of hair on the other side. All right, so braids are a lot of fun to draw, but they do require attention to detail and a lot of patience. And there are some really great tutorials on how to draw braids specifically online. So I highly recommend that if you plan on drawing braids more often, you should definitely seek out some of those tutorials and learn from people who have actually had this hairstyle. I also recommend practicing from reference. All right, so I drew my basic head form because again, you know, it's hard to draw hair if you don't have a head underneath to kind of tell you how the hair is falling. And I have to pay attention to this one because we have a lot going on we've got the hairline so I'm sketching in the hairline just kind of loosely then she's got even though her hair is parted and sectioned out into all these braids she does have kind of a major part going on where some of her hair is on this side and then some of her hair is on this side so I want to keep that in mind as I'm drawing her hair and then she's got this really cool triangle base design. So I'm gonna sketch that in. And each braid is terminating, coming from, starting at, I guess, the center of each triangle. And the triangles kind of alternate. It's a really cool hairstyle. You can tell somebody put a lot of care and attention to detail into actually braiding it. What kind of hairstyles do you guys like to draw the most? So something else I wanna keep in mind is we have a few braids here and then her hair kind of parts and you can see her ear a little bit and you have more of the braids here and then you have some of the ones from the top kind of flowing into the back and then you've got the rest of them going off to the other side. I think all my characters, I like drawing simple hairstyles the best because I'm gonna have to be drawing it over and over and over again. But if I'm drawing for fun, I love, I mean, not that drawing comics isn't drawing for fun, but if I'm just doing a standalone illustration or if I'm doing studies, um, more intricate hairstyles are really cool. So each individual braid is kind of, like like boxy it's not like just a tube you do get some that are like 
a tube, but these, the way they've been braided, because they're like a box plate, P-L-A-I-T. So, actually, I think, hmm. And then you're going to get this kind of like a, like a fish scale pattern for braid. That's kind of how I think about braids when I'm, when I'm drawing braids is because they kind of overlap a bit. But I'm sure different people think of them different ways. So whatever works for you. And there's a lot of different ways to kind of shorthand braids. Like some people will just do... I'm not doing a good job with that one. I'm, I apologize. More like... Yeah, more like this one. I don't know why I was having trouble with that other one. So it kind of depends on how you want to handle it and what you see when you look at the reference. But that's why it's important, even if you think you know how to draw something, it's important to practice drawing it lots of different times in lots of different mindsets because you're gonna see something different if you're looking at it with open eyes every time. So the way I'm gonna draw these braids because I'm drawing in color pencil and it's difficult sometimes when your tip's very blunt like this to get a lot of nuance, I'm going to start by just kind of lightly, hopefully lightly, sketching them in. This is, if I were drawing this hairstyle digitally, what I would do is I would just kind of sketch them in, then reduce the opacity on that layer, and then go in and add the details. And there's even artists who have made braid brushes, like for Clip Studio Paint, so that you just pull the line and it'll do the braid for you. That's, that's the way to go. Do it digitally. It will look so much neater than what I'm able to accomplish accomplish drawing it by hand and it will be so much easier but what I'm really trying to think about right now is I'm trying to think about capturing the flow of her hair the, the motion of her hair because for me with longer hair it's helpful to think of it kind of like a liquid because it does want to move in a consistent direction. So here, they're kind of flowing together and flowing down. Even the hair in the back of her head is doing that. And then something else when drawing hair and doing hair studies is I also like to do what's sometimes known as like an exploded view or a magnified view where I'll draw specific elements, like I'll draw some elements really simply so like I can understand it better when I'm going back and looking at it. And if I'm gonna redraw it for like a character, I know to add all this extra detail in, but this helps me understand the basic hair movement and hair pattern. And like, obviously I would draw her hair more thick, uh, thicker, more filled in. Um, but I'm leaving it kind of loose so that I can better understand the braiding pattern that is going on. Because like I said, it's a really cool design. I really like the... So this is what it basically looks like, okay? You have triangles. And in the center of each triangle is the braid. And the triangles are where the hair's pulled to. So each little triangle forms each braid. You can also shorthand braids just kind of by drawing hearts. It's kind of a, a cheap shorthand for that. And sometimes it's cute. Sometimes it works for the characters. And then in between, it's been pulled tight. So it's scalp that you can see. So that's what creates that geometric pattern. It's pretty cool. So we've drawn a few women's hairstyles. I'm going to show you guys how to draw a men's hairstyle from reference and then we'll move on to how I cartoon hairstyles, how I draw hairstyles for characters. Generally working from reference the first few times until I've kind of established what that hairstyle is going to look like. So again... We're drawing a face. 
I'm not gonna add too much detail to his face. I am, actually I drew his, he's got a big old forehead, so I need to lower those eyes a bit. And then that also means everything else on his face is kind of on the lower half. And I was looking up college hairstyles for this. Like I said, he's got kind of a higher forehead and he's got a widow's peak. So widow's peak, like I said earlier, is when your hair line meets at a point. I have a widow's peak. I think a lot of people do. What I like about this image is you can really see his hairline clearly and in so many of the references you can't. So it's actually nice because I can more clearly understand what I'm drawing. So his, the front part of his hair, because we're doing a front view, finally not just mostly side and back views, the front part of his hair sticks up and it goes in this direction. He's used gel in his hair or he's got really thick hair. Then the sides kind of taper off like that. <laughs> it looks very cartoony. I really kind of like it, but um, I'm just kind of exaggerating it. And then he's got a cowlick back here and it's making some of the hairs stick up a bit. So that's where hair parts and cowlicks and the different zones of the hair can really start come into play when you have someone whose hair has been cut at different lengths you can really start noticing it so maybe we should do somebody with bangs at some point so the front of his hair has been styled or trained because you can train your hair to grow in a certain direction it's been styled to stand up and kind of go off to the side like that it's gonna block in this side of hair because it's darker and then the hair in the back is just kind of sticking up and doing more of the same thing so I'm gonna draw it like that and then darken it in and then over here is just kind of sticking up he's got coarse but straight hair and it just wants to stick up because it's being cut really short I'll do a guy with curly hair next. This guy's got kind of medium long hair for a guy. It's like a little bit past his ears. So we're not going to see as much of the three different zones because it's kind of long for that. And like I said earlier, the more you practice it and the more you kind of analyze and take notes as you're practicing, the better you're gonna understand what you're doing and it's gonna get easier as time progresses. This guy also has a wid widow's peak, but he's got kind of an extreme one. Nothing wrong with that. And then, got that little dip. And then he's also got a very tall forehead. Tall forehead club. Now I know his ear is under there, so I'm just gonna sketch his ear real quick. And then for this guy, I think it's important for me to kind of sketch the basics of what his hair is doing so I can better understand it. So he has kind of what would have been bangs. They're kind of going back behind and he's got a lot of curls. So capturing the basic movements is going to be really helpful for me. And he's got one stray curl just kind of doing his own thing. And really his hair kind of goes out like that. And then it tapers as it gets back into towards his neck. And this will make more sense as I kind of finish it out. And then the rest of his hair is going off that direction. Let's sketch his neck so that I actually understand where everything's going. I'm gonna go sharpen my pencil and we'll add details to this. Okay. So part of this is kind of deciding how realistic I wanna go. The more realistic you go, often the better likeness you can capture, especially with people you don't know well. Honestly, I feel like with people I know really well, and that includes myself, cartoony caricatures really capture personality better it's like all flopped over the rest of his hair 
he's got a lot of hair. Well, rather, he's got a lot of volume because there's probably gel going on in here and also curls. Another thing, if you're doing this for a character, the more you draw it, the more you're going to kind of figure out how to caricature it or create a shorthand for it. Because drawing a bunch of curls is fun, but it can get tedious if you're drawing, you know, nine panels on a page. Or it may be the one thing that makes you draw comics. You just love drawing all those curls. And so everything else is simple and you draw these really beautiful curls. So it really kind of depends on you and what you like to draw and what your inspirations are and what you hope to get out of it. Okay, so he's got, I keep thinking he's got like Beethoven hair cause it's like very fluffy on the sides. Like it, it wants to like poke out. <laughs> so it looks a little, you really gotta style hair like this and then gel it because it's gonna be a wild mess by the end of the day. And it's kind of darker, probably because of the sh shadow, but it doesn't hurt to kind of capture that. It's kind of darker, kind of where the curls start. This is also a good one to use that technique I showed you guys earlier where you're using um, like dark shade marks to show direction of the hair and also to kind of help add color, add tone to there. Now, if you guys are interested in a future tutorial, I'll show you guys how to color color in black and white, different like blonde hair, brunette hair, really dark hair, different hair textures. We can do that one in another tutorial if you guys are interested. But for today, I just kind of wanted to talk about thinking about drawing hair and how to cartoon hair, which I'll do as soon as I finish. Not with this guy, I'm gonna do one more hairstyle. Oh, I think I extended that curl a little too much. It's hard to tell, cause hair really is kinda just going everywhere. What was the phrase, elegantly disheveled? Nothing wrong with spending time on your hair. All right, one more from reference for now. So starting out by sketching the base head. Especially with shorter hairstyles, you gotta sketch out the base hair, cause uh, base head, base of the head, head base. Because otherwise, what are you putting the hair on? Okay, this one's neat, cause he's got some really interesting stuff going on, and we can also see a really clear headline, hairline, at least to start, which I appreciate, cause I had a hard time finding good natural, and by that I mean real human, not other people's sketches. I had a hard time finding good natural hairline reference. This is neat because what we end up getting with the base of his head and then the way his hair is cut, we end up getting a really nice line of motion. So it's moving away from the forehead and then it's arching with the back of the neck and the back of the head. That's pretty cool. And we also get a variety of textures here. So I've kind of blocked in the hair and what I also like is we get this cool fade effect going on. This would be a fun one to do in ink because you could really use nice texture and really capture a good lightness. In color pencil, it's not as fun because you don't get like, you know, the black ink against white paper. You don't get as much contrast, but I'm just doing right now because I'm just doing a study. I'm just doing kind of like little knots and making some of them smaller and that's going to kind of give us that fade effect. Another cool thing about hair is no matter how many times I practice drawing it, 
there's always new hairstyles and new ways of doing hair and people are really innovating. So there's always more for me to learn. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade in up here and kind of fade it into the fade and then so he's got really tight curls and it depends on how much you want to abstract or cartoon what you're drawing because you can do different types of curls depending on how you draw and if you're doing this for a character the character's design That's another reason I don't want to do just like a straightforward. This is how I, this is how you do. This is how one does X, Y, Z. Cause I have a really cartoony style and there's a lot of different ways to draw things when you're doing cartooning. Cause you're abstracting shapes to begin with. Okay. So another thing, depending on whether or not you actually want to capture highlights or if you want to do just kind of a line drawing of the hair. I'm gonna do a little bit of shading. And that way we'll start getting some highlights so you can actually get a good idea of the texture of his haircut. Now, I really recommend uh, this past February drawing while black was a very popular hashtag and that's a great way to gain inspiration insight and to find amazing artists you haven't heard of before so you can still check that hashtag out I believe on like Twitter and Instagram and check out some of the amazing art and there's some really good tutorials in there as well so I hope you guys will check out drawing while black And then his hair kind of faded really as it reached the neckline. I went a little too far down, but that turned out pretty good. Okay, so we have drawn six different hairstyles from reference, three female geared uh, hairstyles, three more masculine geared hairstyles. Although quite frankly, these could definitely be unisex. I guess the other three we drew could definitely be unisex. Anyone can wear any hair. So next I wanna show you guys how I cartoon hair. So when designing haircuts and hairstyles for your characters, when deciding how much detail you want to include, a decent rule of thumb, but this is not the end all be all, is the more cartoony your characters are, the more you kind of keep it to really basic forms and basic shapes, the more realistic or detailed your characters are, the more detail you add back in. And that's not a hard and fast rule. It really varies by the style, but if you're going for a really dynamic, easy to draw cartoony character, keeping those hair shapes simple will really add to that. And you can really utilize their hair in the character act. Okay, so I have a printable template. It's just head busts busts for practicing drawing hair with the basic hairline marked in very like just where the hair might start and then um, where the eye line would be so if you want to you can really make these more into your characters than I have here I'm gonna start by showing you guys how I draw Kara's hair because I draw her all the time so hairline and then she's got these really simplified bangs that are basically drawn in three clumps crossing in front of her face. She has one hair swoop over here and then a little bit of hair covering the other ear on this side. So there is not a lot in the second zone. Then she has kind of a deep part and while she has short hair, it does have some curl to it kind of depending on the mood that I'm drawing that the panel I'm drawing I may give the hair more definition I may give the hair less definition and make it more cartoony it just kind of depends and on this base she looks a lot like me and that bothers me she was not designed to actually look like me um, so most of this is in the back now sometimes I will let me do another one just really quick 
sometimes if I want something that reads as more shoujo or kind of more pretty, I'll do these pieces that kind of come around in the front. And then I'll kind of bring it around back. So then you've kind of merged your zone two with your zone three. With Naomi, because she has really curly hair and I usually draw it in a ponytail or tied back with a bow, um, but I usually draw it kind of out of the way but down, if that makes sense. So usually I draw one bang kind of hanging down. Uh, sometimes I'll give her laid edges, which is where you take the baby hairs and you kind of gel them back a little bit so they're not like all curly in front of your face. Sometimes I'll draw her hair just pulled back into like a high ponytail. It really kind of depends on what's going on in that chapter. I like giving her, or I like finding different hairstyles for her because she's a really cute character and she's kind of stylish so it's fun to kind of do different hairstyles with her. Kara kind of wears her hair like the same three ways over and over and over again. Do another one with Naomi. And I don't really draw her with her hair in her face too often. I don't think she would really like that. Like hair in her face. I think it would kind of get on her nerves. Really the same thing for Kara. I don't normally draw. Usually the main parts of her hair are behind her ears because it gets in my, on my nerves to have my hair on my face. That's why I always pull my hair back when I'm doing videos. So I'll sketch in like a little hair bow, make it into a hair band draw the major form of the hair and then sometimes I'll have it come down over her shoulders though like I said it just kind of depends on what's going on in that chapter and I do like having some curls breaking out from the hole sometimes I'll also add in like little curl windows like eyelet lace has little openings where you could see a little sunlight through and that kind of creates a more lacy, more delicate effect. You can even do that kind of in the main body of the hair as well. So the three zones of hair is really pretty common when drawing anime characters or anime style hair. So I'll draw one and uh, let me know if you guys recognize her in the comments below. You probably will. So she has kind of three prong bangs as well kind of depends on who's drawing her and then she typically has the longer side bangs so what zone two right so zone one then zone two kind of hanging down in front of her face and this kind of softens the transition between you know hair like the front of your head and the rest of your head then her hair is pulled back into twin tails and even though you can't see it it would look kind of like that with a center part usually and then the twin tails come in off of it but often they'll just draw a smooth <laughs> top of the head sometimes they, people draw her with the, the little cute pokey thing that comes off the top but that's actually not that common she's got high ponytails so they're coming off of the top of her head and usually people draw her with bows or more frequently, these kind of frequently, sorry, these kind of squared off things. And then she's kind of fun to draw because she's got really dynamic hair and it's really, really long. And some people draw it really, the, the twin tails, the pigtails really thin. I grew up watching older anime where everybody had super fluffy hair, so, you know, I'm going to draw it kind of thick coming from her head and then maybe getting thinner as it gets longer. And 
Can you guys imagine how heavy that would be? And then often people will draw like additional strands like coming off the hair. It kind of depends on the artist. So if you guys have any guesses as to who this is, let me know down in the comments. And then the back from the nape of the neck, I'm just kind of darkening it in so you guys can see it. And I'm looking because sometimes people will draw her with like a little stray hair here and there and sometimes not. Which happens when you have a lot of hair, you end up with like these little baby hairs that can't quite get pulled up. And unless you're using gel, they're just going to kind of do their own thing. Okay guys, today I showed you a few ways to draw hair. I shared some of my tips and tricks for thinking about how to draw hair, whether you're working from reference or whether you're drawing for a cartoon character. I really cannot stress this enough. I really recommend practicing drawing hair from reference over and over and over again. Even if you have a cartoony art style, practice it semi-realistically and then practice drawing it really cartoony. I think it's going to pay off dividends. I know it's not an easy and fast way to draw hair, but I think it's mm, something that's going to last you a lot longer and is going to be flexible because it doesn't matter what your art style is. It's really about learning how to look at things and analyze things as you're drawing. So some of my tips for practicing to draw hair is draw the form of the head first. Don't just start drawing the hair. Actually draw the form of the head. Be familiar at least somewhat with different hairlines. Practice drawing different hairlines. And one of the ways you can do that is look at reference photos of guys with shaved heads. And you have to be careful there because as people start to go bald, their hairline changes. And it's great to practice that as well, but you want to have a good baseline hairline in mind when you're drawing and designing hair, especially for characters. Another thing to keep in mind is consider that hair flows. Curly hair has a flow, straight has hair has a flow, hair has a flow. It's just that curlier hair tends to have more volume and it may more gradually flow in a direction than straight hair will because straight hair typically doesn't have as much volume as curly hair. I also recommend, especially when you're just kind of starting to understand how to draw hair, you're just starting to learn how to draw hair, figure out the basic form of the hair first and then worry about the details. So we've talked about this a lot here on the channel with volumetric drawing and learning how to see so that you can learn how to draw, looking for basic shapes, simple shapes that anybody can draw, and then adding in more detail to make them actually look like the things they're supposed to look like. And I love, I love when one tutorial ties in with another. So if you are interested in learning how to draw, if you're starting your artistic journey, or if you're struggling to level up and overcome some artistic hurdles, I recommend some of my fantastic drawing tutorials here on the channel. channel. I have a favorite drawing tutorials playlist that I'll link in the cards as well as in the description below. I really hope you guys will check it out. And if you have a friend who's interested in learning how to draw, I highly recommend you share it with them. Not only do you need to consider the basic shape, but you also need to consider the hair texture as well as where the hair is coming from. Whether it's coming from a center part or maybe a cowlick, maybe a bandana is forcing the hair in one direction, or maybe someone's using hair, hair ties to pull their hair in separate directions. Keeping that in mind while you're looking at your reference and while you're drawing will help you draw hair more successfully. Also, taking notes while you draw, doing an exploded view, doing a simplified version of what you're seeing so you can better understand it, and then going in and redrawing things and taking notes is fantastic when you're doing character design because it's going to help you be able to draw the same things over and over again. You're gonna be able to draw that character consistently because you're gonna understand what you were looking at. I also recommend getting the basics in and then going in and adding your details later, as well as varying the types of marks you make to convey different hair textures. And again, if you guys are interested in a tutorial in how to draw an ink hair, because that is a whole different fun kettle of fish, let me know down in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. 
And then finally, I shared some fairly basic tips on how I draw cartoony hair. If you're interested in another video about drawing and designing hairstyles for your characters or using the character's hair to help them emote, to help with the storytelling, let me know down in the description below. But I do need to tell you guys, I actually have a really good tutorial on how to draw different expressions that does utilize using the hair as part of the acting for stronger storytelling. So I hope you guys will check that tutorial. Well, friends, we talked a lot today about the basics of understanding how to draw hair and how to think about hair when you're drawing it from reference. I hope this tutorial was helpful, useful, and informative for you guys. If you know somebody who's struggling to improve how they draw hair or how they work from reference, do me a huge favor and send this tutorial their way. If you're interested in more how to draw tutorials, let me know what you want to learn down in the description below, or you can join me over on the paint box, my art centric discord server. I'll have a link to that down in the description as well. If you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, it does cost time and money to record these kind of tutorials. And of course I'm bringing my many years of experience and education to the table. So it would really mean a lot to me if you join me over on Patreon. Just $2 a month will not only unlock way more tutorials than just this one, because I'm going to be moving a lot of my alcohol marker and watercolor tutorials to Patreon only, but it will also get you access to printables like this one. So you can draw along with me when I'm doing these kind of tutorials. And it'll also get you access to my class presentations and my class notes. So if you're learning how to draw at home, or if you're teaching art and you need some additional resources, you can access those via my Patreon. So I hope you guys had a great time today. I had a blast showing you guys how I draw hair and I hope to see you guys again soon. So have a wonderful day guys. Happy drawing. Bye.